Well, here we are, drawing up to uh, the Great Hall in Winchester for this wonderful evening. This is absolutely amazing. I'm just going to pull up here and um, hopefully not run oh, over that any... that was a marvellous journey. Did you enjoy that? It's the nicest car I've ever been in. Good evening, Jason. Good evening, the Great Hall at Winchester. Hi. And uh, we just come along to see Emma Thompson tonight and uh, all these lovely people. I think Greg Wise, I think, is going to be here. Ooh! Um, so um, <laughs> I'm just going to park the car. I'm going to let the um, the lady out. Let, let the lady out. Thank you. I'll come around and let you out. Oh, do. I'm good like that. Hang, just just one second. Excuse me, Jason. Um, I'm just coming around here. Oh, thanks to Ian Jacobs and all at Martins of Winchester for this wonderful MG. Hello, darling. <laughs> just follow me. Yes, I'm sure somebody else will park. We'll just leave the engine running. Oh, marvellous. Yes. Just okay. just follow me. So um, we'll see you later. Bye. Well, we promised you a very lovely evening on Town TV, or even a lovely evening on Town TV. I'm here with the wonderful Sarah. We're in the Great Hall at Winchester. It's an absolutely stunning building. Just up behind Jason there is the uh, original round table. Uh, we're drinking copious amounts of champagne, having a great time. How are you, Sarah? Cold. Thanks for coming down. <laughs> Pleasure. I do admire your frock. <laughs> oh, this is from the Fashion Clinic in Wandsworth. We're going up there to film in a week or so. What well on Fashion Clinic in Wandsworth. Wandsworth. We're going to go around and try and talk to a few people. Everybody's being very precious tonight because it's being terribly lovely. But um, hopefully we can bring them uh, bring a bit of news from the Great Hall in Winchester. Anyway, let's go and talk to Ian from, from Martins of Winchester, the MG dealers, who supplied us with an MG for tonight. You could always rely on a car salesman for a chat. Yes. <laughs> Come this way. So what are you doing here in Winchester tonight besides showing off your wonderful new MG? Well, we thought it would be the ideal sort of venue and event for the car to be displayed at, really. Um, sort of people that are here, a lot of them have probably owned MGs in the past and probably want to in the future as well. So uh, it's a good setting. It's a good, it's a good event for Winchester. Yeah, what a great venue for the launch oh, of the uh, screen, isn't it? Really fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. I think it's been done extremely well. I think Winchester needed a good cinema, don't you? Yes, it did. I remember sitting in the old flea pit watching <laughs> Live and Let Die, and I was impressed with that, but I'm sure this will be ten times better. Ian, tell me about the MGF. The MGF, well, it's a little car that was launched in February last year yeah. at the Heritage Centre in Gaydon. Um, basically, it's car that's been built and constructed for people who had MGs in the 60s and 70s who want to sort of relive those glory days and really to compete with a lot of the Japanese uh, imitators yeah. as well. Uh, as you can see it's a stunning car. Uh, the Let's have a look around it. This one, absolutely, Jason this way. Look at this. What a wonderful car. I love these new headlights. Yeah. I didn't like them on the Ford Scorpio or whatever no. it was called but on here, it looks perfect, doesn't no, it? It looks very reminiscent of the old MGs, I think, the front. Um, I think Ro the Rover Group have done an excellent job with this car because yeah. it is stunning, both from the front, as you can see, yeah. and from the rear. Yeah. It really is an attractive looking car. So, what, um, what CC is it? It's an 1800. Yeah. 1800 CC. This particular model does uh, 120 miles an hour. Really? Top speed and. Uh, nor nor to 60? Nor to 60 in 7 seconds. Sorry, 8 seconds. How about uh, petrol consumption? And that sort of stuff. Oh, I'd have to resort really? to the uh, catalogue on that one. Well, who will worry about that if you're driving one of these <laughs> wonderful motor cars? I can tell you it's not available in diesel format. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we've, we've taken uh, plenty of orders for the car and. Uh, a lot of those people started ordering the car in February '95, and they yeah. still haven't got the car yet. So that's the sort of interest that the the car has provoked. Do you think if I ask Ian nicely, uh, Jason, you can let us take it out on a road test for Town TV? What do you think? Probably not. Probably. <laughs> I think. I think it would. We drove the Marcus last week. We did the Marcus last week. Why not do the MG the week afterwards on Town TV? We get all the perks. Look at this car. It's wonderful. Look at it. Look at those big bright dials in there. I like this car. I'm totally unbiased, actually. Oh, the golf umbrella's extra. I love the little air ducts down there. Look, Jason, Jack. Look. It looks terribly macho, all these little... All the finishing touches. Look at those little bits. Little alloy wheels. It's a wonderful car. We've yeah, had a great we've evening. Yeah, Ian, sorry, sorry, Ian, thank you very much. That's right. Well, there's the star of this evening's proceedings, Emma Thompson. And, uh, busy look, signing autographs and doing all sorts of things. As you know, she's up for, uh, several Oscars. She wrote the screenplay to Sense and Sensibility. 
and uh, it's had fantastic reviews. I cannot believe this. I'm here with Greg Wise and only five minutes ago he looked at me. I'm a million. He said, I'm too talked out. I am here to have fun. Well, I am absolutely talked out. <laughs> I know. Wednesday. I know. I'm sure you are. But uh, anyway, Greg, you've had a really busy career since 1991, haven't you? You trained up in Scotland and Absolutely. then you, since you've hit London, you've just kind of, uh, it's gone mad, hasn't it? I've been very fortunate, very lucky and uh, have done some nice work up until now. It well, can always change though, you know that. It was mainly theatre, wasn't it, before you did the film? Uh, no, I'd, be, I'd done quite a bit of work for the BBC, uh, various series and things and uh, the odd BBC film. Uh, but uh, I did a Merchant Ivory film last year that hasn't come out yet. So we're going to see a lot more of you on our screens? Ah, uh, who knows? Um, how different is it to working in the movies as it is to TV, Greg? Um, you have a bit more time, that's about all. And uh, you get a nicer place to sit between takes. Oh, do you? That's Not the caravan? Not, well, you get a very <laughs> sumptuous caravan, put it that way. And have you sort of primed yourself for uh, superstardom now? Because this is going to go out in America and it's like big, big news over here. And you are the heartthrob, aren't you? You're the, can I just cuddle the latest heartthrob? Excuse me. <laughs> you, I mean, there could be a thousand women out there screaming, Greg Wise, Greg Wise. Are you ready for this kind of recognition? I, I, I have no idea. It's already been out in the States for a couple of months and it's doing very well there. Um, I hope the English audience will like it. Um, I think Hugh Grant and Alan Rickman are the heartthrobs. I'm just the cad. Oh, he's so much. Have you been to the States? Uh, yeah, I was there for the uh, Los Angeles premiere in December. Right. Well, best of luck anyway, and hope your career just goes on and on and on. That's it's great to see you on our screens. Cheers. Thanks for the interview. Thank you. Until tomorrow, then. And my pocket sonnets are yours, Miss Marianne. A talisman against further injury. Goodbye. Thank you. Good work, Marianne. You've covered Shakespeare, Scott, all forms of poetry. Another meeting will ascertain his views on nature and romantic attachments, and then you will have nothing left to talk about, and the relationship will be over. I suppose I have heard against decorum. I should have been dull and spiritless and talked only of the weather or the state of the roads. No, but Mr. Willoughby can be in no doubt of your enthusiasm for him. Why should he doubt it? Why should I hide my regard? No particular reason, only that we know so little of him. Isn't she gorgeous? Oh, she's so sweet. Emma, well, I've had to put my champagne down. We're with Emma Thompson now. Um, Emma, in this terribly dramatic building, <laughs> welcome to Winchester. Thank you. When you started writing Sense and Sensibility, yes. did you have any idea how many years it would take to get the perfect script? Because you were still working as an actress, weren't you, at the same time? No, I had no idea. And uh, what was nice was that there was no deadline. You know, I used to set my own deadlines and meet them, but there was no studio deadline, which was tremendously helpful because it meant that during those five years, um, I made seven films, and after each film, I go back to the script, and I wasn't nearly as um, protective about it, um, having had a few months away. It would spring clean all the stuff out of my head, and I'd be able to come back to the writing and think, oh yes, I see what's wrong, I see what I need to do now. So in fact it was tremendously helpful to be able to earn money and survive as an actress whilst I was writing. Um, it, because it just gave, it gave the script a great deal more development time, you know, you could mm. leave it to lie, to lie there and marinade or whatever <laughs> scripts do in their spare time, I don't know. I wanted to ask you, would you take on such a labour of love again? Because you did say, I've read about the fact that you said you'd like to write. Do you think all screen adaptations are as difficult as this or was it the complexities of Jane Austen that perhaps made this one such a little horror? <laughs> I think certainly there was a huge um, onus upon us not to let her down and not, not to let a genius, really, which is what she was, um, down um, by presenting something that didn't represent her genuinely. Um, so I'm sure that that was more of a thing. Uh, quite honestly, though, I, I think if and when, well, I'm sure I will start writing again. But I don't expect to finish another decent script before another five years. To be, to be honest, I think the longer you take over something, probably the better it is. According to Hugh Grant, he said that every actor in this country was squabbling for a part in your movie once they'd read the script. You must have found that very flattering. Did you think then, at that point, that perhaps you had a success on your hands? No, 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 no. Hugh was just being terribly nice, actually, Aww. to be perfectly honest. Are you great friends? Honest. Well, I mean, we've worked together three times three times now and um, and I was very pleased because this was the first time I'd actually worked opposite Hugh um, and he's such a wonderful actor 
wonderful actor to work with, so precise and so heartfelt. Um, they did say so he was he perfect was, for this role, like you were for yours. I wrote, I wrote it for him mm -hmm. because um, when I started writing it, we had already worked together on Remains of the Day and uh, a film about Chopin called Impromptu. And, um, and I did a reading of the script a couple of years ago and, um, and I asked him to read Edward. And I said, please, will you do it when we come to make the film? And this was before he'd made Four Weddings and a Funeral and mm. become more famous than <laughs> God. And um, so it was extraordinary to me that he kept his promise and, you know, because he could have gone off and done any big Hollywood number, you know. Well, that's and a friend for you, isn't it? Well, it is. It was the act of a great friend. I was very appreciative. And I think he did an absolutely fabulous job as Edward. Well, I haven't seen the film yet, but I'm sure he did. But actually, when you um, did that read-through that you were talking about, there were a lot of really fine actors there. Indeed. Were you sort of subconsciously casting roles at that point? Well, not even subconsciously. I was actually casting roles because I had to cast them to read the part. But what I was so thrilled about was that because the director is the man in charge of, or the woman in charge of, in this case, the man in charge of casting um, there was no way of saying well you have to have these actors but what was nice was that Ang Lee the director did cast five of the actors we had at the reading I see so, I have to ask you actually um, you said that you didn't think that you were re writing any of the parts for yourself but that the part of Eleanor everyone thought was you did it not occur to you that you'd written it sort of for you well, at any stage at all? No, you don't write... It. I think it's a mistake as a writer to write something for yourself. Because what if something happens to you and you can't do it? You've got to write it so that anybody can play it. It's, it also, I think if you write it for you, uh, there are certain things that you think you can get away with or certain things that you perhaps only would understand. You have to write it so that any actor can get up and do that part. So That's you, very important. Were you not aware that it was kind of very you? I was, yes indeed I was, but I was also aware of the fact that it was not up to me whether I played it or not, particularly at the beginning when I was an unknown actress and an unknown writer. So one simply had no power or jurisdiction over that, mm. and that's the case, you know, it's just not up to me. I was not directing the movie, casting the movie myself in that part was not mm. um, it, within my jurisdiction. Mm. I just like to wrap this up and say good luck in the Oscars, you're going to come home with about seven gold men, aren't you? I hope so. Oh. Well, you know, one one would do, um, and not even gold at that. But um, oh, stop are they gold plated? No. Um, <laughs> yes, they are actually. Yes, um, and they weigh a lot, nine and a half pounds. Thanks very much, Emma Thompson. Thank you. Always resignation and acceptance. Always prudence and honour and duty. Eleanor, where is your heart? What do you know of my heart? What do you know of anything but your own suffering? For weeks, Marianne, I've had this pressing on me, without being at liberty to speak of it to a single creature. It was forced on me by the very person whose prior claims ruined all my hopes. I have endured her exaltation again and again, whilst knowing myself to be divided from Edward forever. Believe me, Marianne, had I not been bound to silence, I could have produced proof enough of a broken heart, even for you. We had a wonderful, t wonderful time. The champagne's running out. Everybody's gone to the cinema, haven't they? They're queuing over there. And you interviewed Greg Wise and Emma Thompson. I can't believe I got to speak to Greg Wise. It was all thanks to Richard Price. Did you like him? Well, he was very charming the second time round. He didn't like me first time, but he's a very nice chap, really. Well, you name dropped, so you got an interview, didn't you? <laughs> Emma's lovely. Yeah, she's a smashing interview. So, um, hope you enjoyed that. We're enjoying the champagne, and uh, we're now off to the cinema. So, we're going to bring you a little clip now of Sense and Sensibility. Hope you enjoy the film. Thanks for watching Town TV. And, and stop th drinking from the bottle, Alan. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> thanks very much. See you back at the studio. Bye for now. Bye. And what can have fascinated you to such an extent, Miss Dashwood? Tell us all. We were talking of London, ma'am. And of all it's... Diversions. Do you hear that, Charlotte? <laughs> While you were so busy whispering, Charlotte and I have concocted a plan. Oh, it is the best plan in the world. I make for London shortly, 
And I invite you, Lucy, and both of Mrs. Dashwood to join me. Splendid London. Isn't it splendid? Well, can I go? Can I go? Oh, you know perfectly well you're too young. I shall convey you all to my house in Chelsea, and we will taste the delights of the season. What say you? Oh, please, can I go? I'm 12 soon. Mr. Mr. do not long to have Mrs. Dashwood come to London. I came into Devonshire with no other view. Mrs. Jennings, you are very kind, but we cannot possibly leave our mother. Oh, your mother can spare you very well. Of course I can. Of course she can. I could not be more delighted. It is exactly what I would wish. I will brook no refusal, Miss Dashwood. Let us strike hands on the bargain. And if I do not have the three of you married by Michaelmas, it will not be my fault. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Jennings, I'm going to be on everything. Look at your daughter's face, Mrs. 